So it's good you're taking notes. Great, you're taking I, notes. So the other piece I just wanted to add is I hope to have a date for this at this point, but kind of going off of our, our year uh, since swearing folks in, we're hoping to do a kind of mini Crest Academy for a day mm -hmm. in July. Um, where folks can kind of come and experience some of the trainings that our responders went through mm -hmm. um, and give folks just a little bit of a taste of kind of um, the the things they bring to the table. And, and we hope to make that a fairly regular a regular event. We're working with our training partners. So hopefully that can be kind of a, a part 1.5 until we get to the next listening session. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions for Earl based on the listening session or are there any things that we need to include? I think you know, having something simple the first time and not trying to make it too complicated is is important, but I want to make sure we're covering what everyone would like to see. So Are we all planning on being there. So, so, so then we talk about having a refreshment. Oh, right. Um, we did not. Uh, oh, we did. Um, uh, is there a budget? Um, Ms. Bra Ms. Pamela? Uh, I have I I if if that's something folks wanted something that I I can cover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's not very simple. So like the like the grief session. Yes, that, that yeah, like Easy. the uh, healing session. Yeah, that works. Uh, you'll get that exactly think that exact thing again. Yeah, that <laughs> so, works. Yeah. Thank you. I think that'll be good. Yeah. Um, in terms of outreach or um kind of advertising since it is coming up quick. I'm wondering, because I did see the DEI presentation that was supposed to happen in the superintendent's report. Um, so I'm wondering if that's, if this poster is something that could be passed along to the school committee, because that will, that will reach a group of people who might not be watching this meeting, um, assuming that other parents check their superintendent's report for emails. Um, but I was also wondering if maybe outreaching to town counselors, because I know some of them at least have lists of, you know, people who have attended their meeting, you know, their district meetings in the past, you know, to see if that's something they'd be willing to distribute to their district. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it's I'm just trying to think of ways to get the information out there besides just the town website. We, we, can, we can also uh, share it with with our partners um, mm -hmm. and we can the responders if we get we'll print out the flyers and post them around so folks can see it. That's something yeah. we can definitely do. What about those weird sign thingies that are in town? Ooh, like, Brianna, I, I will ask Brianna about getting on the, the touch screens. I've always wanted it. <laughs> um, so I would say, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I would say that the flyer, whoever did it, is is nice. Thank you. So that we can was, send it to MSND. That was a Jennifer Wasted one. <laughs> That's right. really nice. So, yeah. Yeah. So Jennifer did the flyer, um, and uh, again, she's been in and out of the office. She's um, been under the weather, but I think that it was her intention to send it out to her network of contacts. Okay. And that includes the schools. So, but I will, I'll have to double check with her. Um, yeah, generally the, my, the Zoom meetings that I set up are automatically record. So I didn't even check to see if we we're recording, um, but I have been taking notes. So yeah. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it looks like we missed about the first hour of yeah. the recording. So, yeah. um, so basically, CSSJC, our role that day was to listen, correct? Right? That's why it's called listening session. Is that correct? I, okay. I yes. think the hope is that everyone is listening and learning together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I uh, think we need to eventually have our own, but, um, you know, it's important. We have Crest right now, yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to add in and just piggyback off of what Dee had said in the beginning of the meeting, just um, for an equity piece of having um, translation services off of Spanish. I think I have tried in my networks to convince people to come to this and the pushback that I'm getting is, well, is it gonna be in Spanish? Are you gonna be there translating? What's happening with that? Like, And so I'm kind of like, 
yes and no. Like I wouldn't mind translating to a few people, but my Spanish is not up to that standard of a better high per higher person that can translate a lot quicker than I can. And so for that piece, I think that that's kind of a piece that we really do need to look at in the town because I think there are some interested bodies in the Latinx community. But the concern is that their needs will not be met because they have gone to stuff in town and they're just, for a lack of better words, they have said that it is a waste of their time. Thank you for, for emphasizing that, Philip. Okay. Um, I mean, Pamela, do we have a list of people to hire for translation or has Zoom um, been upgraded uh, to add the component of translation. What, what do we have to uh, offer Spanish language translation at this point in public meetings? So um, I do not have a list of Spanish language translators. I do have a list of American Sign Language translators. Um, I do believe that Zoom has the capability for language translation, but um, you know, I am not a, I, that I technically, I don't have excellent technical skills, so I would not want to uh, state that with 100% certainty, but that's my understanding. And there, um, I think that there is a possibility that we might be able to obtain someone for translation services, but this is a week out, so uh, that makes it really difficult to um, you know, to, to obtain someone and hire them within, within a week's time. Um, but we so, can put that on our, on our list and see, uh, what possibilities there might be. I, I mean, I, I do know that Jen and I were in a conversation recently with, um, some folks at Amherst College, and there's a possibility that there might be support from Amherst College around translations through a, a program that they have. So I, that would be my first call tomorrow to see if there might be someone who could step in. Um, but as Philip has pointed out, translation services really are a very unique skill um, and people have to have a, a wide vocabulary and an understanding of the subject matter um, it's not easy just to have someone who's, you know, Spanish speaking or Mandarin speaking step in without knowledge of the of the of the topic. And, but I, I mean, I can try to make a call tomorrow. But generally, you'd need a little bit more lead time than a week away. So this this is my issue. I and I appreciate if you if you yeah try to get on it tomorrow. Um, for, for DEI, for equity purposes in this town, this has to be something that we are able to provide, um, you know, have a list of, and we can explain to people, this is not perfect. This is our first time in, in doing this. And they will understand. So, okay, we miss that word translated or it's not translated properly, but have, you know, we're, we're in the process of building a list of professionals, people who are able to come in and uh, be compensated, hopefully, um, to translate at public meetings. Mm -hmm. I, I so just think this is like a basic thing that needs to happen. So I do, let me finish. I, I do appreciate that you're going to reach out um, as soon as possible. But I think this is part of uh, equity that we yeah. need to build into our community. Yeah, so I would agree that it is part of equity, but it also needs to be planning. Like in an ideal situation, the event would be planned and there would be a uh, notice right then and there at that moment that language translation would be required. And so there would be some time to put to put it in, in, in place. And in most instances that I'm aware of, and obviously I'm not aware of every instance, um, the notices would be 
uh, would include language that says if translation services are required, then there would be a request for an accommodation. Um, and so that is part of the plan. It is certainly something that the office is thinking of and is trying to work towards, but it's not in place at this moment. Um, and I'm just trying to be realistic and yep. saying that I can make an attempt, but you know, a week's notice is, uh, is really a short period of time in, in order to obtain uh, translation services. No, and I, I agree. And I think uh, it's important for us to make the effort to have something, you know, if we can get it, it's important to make the effort. And I, I would say it's, it's, you know, how you described it, it's more of an HR uh, type of um, narrative or language to, to say, well, if it's needed. It's kind of like uh, if you build it, they will come. And it well, hurts how I see it, that if we say, you know, language, um, particularly, and again, the largest other language group is Spanish speakers. And so if we make it available continually, mm -hmm. even if it's just two or three there, more people will feel, I, I believe, like they're being represented and they're being invited into that space because their language is going to be heard and spoken in some capacity. And so, so that's I, why I think it's important. So I, I it is, there's no disagreement that it's important, uh, but I, I also have to think about, you know, capacity. So in, in, in the department that I currently have, with the budget that I currently have, in the seven months that I've been trying to build this department up, it's not something that I can say, you know, I have this to offer at this moment. Would it be fantastic if I could make that offer? It would be, but you know, I'm 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 speaking to you from the reality of where I sit. It's not something that I can say. I I have a list of people and I can call tomorrow. And, and provide and provide that service. Certainly what the way in which you've described it is the ideal. Um, and obviously, you know, the town has made a commitment through its statement that this is something that it's striving to do. But, you know, um, unfortunately we're, we're not, I, I don't have it to offer at this moment. Okay, well, thank you for, for being, you know, honest about it and I, I know you're working on it as far as the technical part um i believe it's a it's an upgrade within zoom in order to allow for spanish unless we already have that as a town so i think it, it i think that it already exists um in zoom as a possibility but again i'm like you know i'm don't have a a lot of vast knowledge around the technical aspects of zoom and so I, I would have to ask that question of the IT department. Okay. But I'm fairly certain that that does um, exist. All right. So IT will get back to us about that. Thank you so much. Earl? Yeah, so just two quick things. Um, one, I think it's in the show captions. It allows you to do that in Spanish. Um, two, the other thing that I've heard from Spanish-speaking folks is that that's always going to be still a poor substitute because they're kind of hearing a conversation that's happening. Um, and I would... Philip, maybe this makes sense to, to have a conversation with you about. Um, we have a responder, Rome Cabrera, who's really been practicing being able to do this presentation in Spanish. Um, and so I'd also love to consider um, having a responder do this same conversation in Spanish so that, you know, uh, finally someone made it click, right? It's the it's the language people kind of feel in um, and having something, uh, yeah, understanding a concept in the language of, of your, your heart makes is different. So um, we'd also love to do one of these in Spanish. Rome is a wonderful presenter um, and I think uh, has shown and, you know, really worked to be someone who can do that. So I'd love to to do that with folks and, and think about that and maybe have that be a, a secondary uh, thing that we do always when we do listening sessions. That's great. I was trying to put my thumbs up instead of my hand. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I just really want to echo everything that I think Dee and Philip have said. I think it's 
so important that it's not a footnote. And I guess maybe thinking forward to the next session that we host, we we think, okay, well, hopefully we'll have more planning time for that, right? Um, but also here are some things that we could do. Like maybe we have a Google form that you register for and we have a checkbox on that that says preferred language so that we know, okay, we have people who are interested in this. And it will be beneficial for us to provide this service because people already know that they want to come and know that they'll need it. Um, and I think Rome is great. So Rome, a lovely person to. He, he loves local government, so he'll love getting a shout out during an official CSSJC meeting. Right. So is there anything else about the, the listening session? Are we all planning to be there? Okay, great. So thank you. And thank you, Pamela, for helping us plan this. And thank you, Earl, for being willing to do this. I think it's a good start. Thanks for letting me take up some space tonight. Take care, everyone. So back to Pamela and the DEI. Oh, ah. the nose, the front there. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear yeah. you. Um, back to Pamela and the DEI update. Oh, we can't hear you, Pamela. You muted. It help if it help if I would unmute. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the. First thing, and I was surprised that um, Earl did not share this, but he and I have agreed to share uh, an AmeriCorps volunteer or AmeriCorps intern for the fall. The person will start in August and spend, um, you know, 50% of their time with DEI and 50% with press. The primary and, and really uh, sole purpose of this person is to work on youth development and youth empowerment. Um, and, um, you know, we've both um, created uh, a budget request to support the position. Um, and I know in, in my budget, I'm also requesting support for youth programming for that position um, as well. So um, uh, the town has a core equity group. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with it. Are, are you at all? Okay, so prior to my arrival, the town um, joined uh, GARE, which is the Government Alliance for Racial Equity, right? and um, members of the town, um, various departments self-selected and, and created a core equity group. Uh, Jen and I have been thinking about ways that we can expand that group. Um, when I arrived, there were probably about, you know, maybe six members of the group. And we're now approaching double that amount um, with membership from FIRE, the senior center, the health departments, the clerk's office, conservation and development, finance, press, um, IT, uh, Jones Library, and the town manager's office. And the plan is for this group to be a working group. So to work internally at learning more about DEI um, initiatives and the principles um, behind diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as to serve as facilitators. So as press um, served as facilitators for the National Day of Racial Healing, members of this group will be trained and they will also be able to do workshops and trainings and service for facilitators for the work that we're doing. Um, the DEI office and the human resource office uh, partnered for a professional development day for the town. Um, the town manager has uh, established that there would be quarterly um, half days for professional development. The um, most recent one was last Thursday. We um, there were in charge of two presentations, uh, Jen and uh, Melissa, Melissa Lodici Walker, who's the new HR director, did presentation on microaggressions and implicit bias. And then Elizabeth Pru, who is the HR manager, and I did a workshop on uh, team building. 
Um, we did, I think since the last report, uh, complete the second Black History Month uh, event, which was on resiliency as it was demonstrated through the history of um, African-American music. And um, we have started to roll out our um, DEI workshops for various departments. Um, we've made a decision that the workshops will be customized for each department. So no two will be the same. Yeah, the issues that are in DPW are different from the issues um, you know, so in finance. And so we're really trying to specialize and customize the workshops to the needs of the department and where we feel that the folks in that department are as far as their journey towards anti-racism. Um, uh, I did complete, and I think the last time I spoke to you was two, two months ago, I did complete the conversations with the consultants around the resident oversight uh, board as far as the development of that RFP, and it is, um, you know, nearing completion. So. And I think that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Pamela. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like you all have been busy. I am familiar with GARE and, um, I was wondering what had been happening with that. I just remember it being announced in the paper last year or so and, and did not know what was the status of it. So um, they provide a, a list of guidelines that are uh, with other national, um, I guess, municipalities. Uh, and uh, I mean, it looks, Great surface. I don't. I just. I don't know. Um, other than sharing information, um, I guess it broadens the network of folks trying to do this type of work. So, Gare actually has a pretty robust um, program for analysis and DEI assessments for for you know for government agencies and municipalities. Um, we have not chosen to do the GARE self-assessment yet, which is, uh, if memory serves me right, um, probably I think in excess of like 50 questions, if not more. Um, instead, we as a department decided to do a smaller um, self-assessment around DEI issues. And the I think I reported to this group about that. Uh, a few months ago that each department was going to answer a series of self-assessment questions. And then Jen and I would have an opportunity to look at that those questions. Um, so GARE does have a very robust um, programming. The way in which the town had been interacting with GARE um, prior to my arrival was utilizing some of their resources and beginning to educate themselves about uh, DEI issues and um, um, through their resources. So we still have an active membership. Um, I think there's probably a lot of area for growth to utilize their, um, their resources more than we have been. But my general feeling is that um, some baby steps are really needed to, to sort of get into this area. Not, uh, there is a wide, range of where folks are in the various departments uh, in town as far as learning about and being open to and figuring out how their particular departments will be able to utilize the services of the D diversity, equity, and inclusion department, as well as the services that um, are available through GARE. And uh, I it was my sense that having a little slower pace was probably the best way to proceed. So um, designed uh, an internal shorter DEI assessment that we use. Uh, in addition to GARE, um, the town has, it's sort of, there's an informal collaborative of diversity and equity directors in municipalities in the Commonwealth. Um, and they meet on a bi-monthly um, 
basis. So we, Jen and I have both been a party to those meetings, which have uh, provided some insights and directions. Um, there's a sharing of resources. And that's been very helpful because, you know, all of the other members are members of the Commonwealth. So still subject to the same laws that we are uh, subject to. And I did share that group produced last year a DEI guide for municipalities in the Commonwealth. And that guide was shared with all of our department heads as part of the self-assessment um, tool that we designed within the department. I see. So yeah. this is not like um, an equity audit. This is um, kind of a survey of each department and what they're mm -hmm. doing. So, so um, well, when I guess I'm, I'm asking, that has already gone out. And when should we, uh, as the community and the CSSJC, expect a report on, on that? So that has gone out and we're probably about 75%, uh, um, we probably received about 75% of the responses back. So we're still collecting responses. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Getting every department to respond in it uh, is something that we're striving for. I sent out a reminder um, for the last few departments, um, I think about two weeks ago. So um, once all of the departments have re responded, then we will be completing our analysis of their response. But it was a very basic survey. So it looks at the demographics of the um, of the staffing in the department. It asks questions about the uh, constituents that are the served, whether they're volunteers, it asked uh, questions about how our office might work with each of the department, um, what sort of training they might um, be interested in receiving. You know, it was, I would say it was a very um, broad range in the types of questions that we uh, asked, but not seeking a lot of depth of information really an entry into, into thinking about how um, our office will work with those departments and how we can support them and have them understand that regardless of what they do, there, um, there is a possibility of examining their work through an equity lens. Okay, so you're saying this is the first entree in that. So is there a plan to then send out or do focus groups within these departments to do an actual equity audit, which would assess how they approach um, diversity, equity, and inclusion within each department and, and also look at the demographics of hiring, like you know who's there, who's been retained, those well, types of things. So, um, so I think there will be after the assessment of what we have of, you know, after we've had an opportunity to review and sort of um, have a better understanding of what this initial response is, then there will probably be uh, a, a, another opportunity to do a more in-depth equity audit. But I, my thinking has been that I really need to get introduce um, the various departments, which vary from very large like DPW to very small like the town, you know, clerk's office has three people. Um, that rather than having a large, very in-depth um, initial entree, that I would try to um, step into the process by having people uh, asking the department's heads to do this initial one, and then at the one-year anniversary, when at, when folks have had an opportunity to have some introduction to this work to then ask them to do a deeper dive into it. Okay, so will it be you, Pamela, doing kind of an equity audit looking, because I'm sure all that's listed in HR, who's who, and, and giving kind of this demographic picture of who we have employed in terms of racial, ethnic, mm -hmm. language, diversity, what have you, education, um, just to so, give a picture of that, uh, for our town. Right. So we did include in this initial, um, you know, self-assessment, a snapshot of the demographics of, um, of the employees for the department. But the demographic information is not as in-depth 
or as robust as one might hope. So, um, and that's just a reflection of what was collected in the systems that were used in the past. So, you know, under federal law, you would typically want to have not only race and gender, but also veteran status and disability mm -hmm. status. Right. That information is not available. So, you know, um, so, um, you know, so what, what each department received was a snapshot of, of that department's staffing and, and the way in which we typically would do it is that, you know, you choose one day and whatever the staffing is on that day, that's the snapshot that you then use as a comparison point. Because as with any department, things are changing. You might have more employees on a particular day. If you hire seasonal employees, you might have less on, a, on another day. So we received from HR demographic information um, and then provided that information to the department heads so that they could review it, um, check it for accuracy, um, if they were able to put, to fill in some of that missing information, they could, you know, input that information. But it was not as robust as as one might have hoped it would be. Um, but that's what we have, um, and that the demographic information did come from HR. And I will also add that you know. Unfortunately, uh, Jen and I were working on this at a time in which we did not have a permanent HR director. And so there is, you know, there's been some, some transition, although we, I think that the information that we got was as accurate as we could get for the time frame that we, we asked for it. Okay, my last question, and I'll stop here. Any of that information that goes out to the departments, does it have a letter attached from the town uh, manager? Um, okay. So I, I, when it goes out, does it have anything like, you know, town manager would kind of an introduction, kind of giving a, a shaping and, and an impetus and a tone to these departments? This is something that's important. Uh, to participate in. Uh, I'm just worried about the other 25% that have not sent in their oh, survey. Okay, oh, for the self-assessment, did that uh -huh. have a letter from the town manager? Mm -hmm. um, it did not, but um, the town manager and I introduced us at a department head uh, meeting, okay. and I've had subsequent uh, conversations with him about the, you know, the few departments. So, um, you know, some departments I know were were um, were more challenged because of the number of employees that they have, um, and this is new to them. So there is always, you know, as in any survey, there's always a little bit of a, a challenge for people to be able to respond and have a complete understanding of what you're asking for. One of the ways in which we did try to utilize the core equity group, the group that I started the conversation with was to say uh, the core equity group assisted in reviewing the, the self-assessment, read it over for questions and input, looked for ways in which we might edit the questions to make them um, you know, more clear. And then members of that group, uh, a few members of that group volunteered to assist departments if they felt like they were, you know, needed some hand holding or needed some help in um, and either understanding the questions or, or sorting through their data because it, it is a it's a new ask for them and so i'm i know that we will get 100% um i'm not surprised that there's a, a delay i've in any position that i've had previously whenever there's been a survey there's always been uh, a few people that you have to really nudge over the finish line so um to say that we're at 75% i think is is um to say that we're in in very good shape thank you Mm -hmm. Who's that? Uh, if you want to go first, well, um, thank you, Ms. Pam, for the presentation. Could you speak a little bit more about the youth programming? Because I'm glad to hear that, you know, you're, you know, you're finally looking into that because that was CSWG recommendation for the youth program to come under DEI. And I hope that will be some 
resources, robust resources, you know, for you to be able to carry that out. Has it has a building been uh, identified for the youth program? So there's, uh, I haven't been involved in in any of the conversations about the building of, uh, you know, the cultural center or youth empowerment center. But I know um, that this is an issue that is in, of importance to the community, and so having the ability to share um, the AmeriCorps intern with Earl creates some capacity. So a building will be, you know, years away, but having me someone who can dedicate time and energy into researching and developing and pulling this together is something that we could do now, uh, utilizing, you know, town spaces or school spaces that we have. And so the discussion that I had with Earl was, you know, um, are you interested in sharing responsibility for hosting this intern? Can we both decide that we want to have the intern work on youth development? And that's the primary purpose of uh, the AmeriCorps volunteer. It fits in very nicely with their mission. Um, and since the opportunity arose, um, and Earl and I were both in agreement, I submitted an application on our behalf, and that application has been accepted. And it's now just a matter of uh, finalizing a contract to have a person in place to begin to do this work. Uh, the, the, the contract could be up to two years, but I uh, initially decided that we would start with one year. We want to see how it's going to work out. Um, and then that person's primary responsibility will be to build out the programming under you know, my supervision and supervision from Kat Newman and Cress. Um, so I think it can be. Um, really whatever we want it to be as far as development is concerned. Um, I did, you know, take a look at the community safety working group, what the topics were in that report. So um, youth empowerment, leadership, academics, all of those things are included as topics that we would want the AmeriCorps intern to, re to research and develop. Um, and with someone who's in place, who can dedicate their time to doing this in conjunction with Crest, I think there's a lot of possibility there for it to be, you know, a successful program. But it's just going to be, you know, the beginning. So thank you. I have so many questions. I won't drag up the, the night. Um, so what about the $500,000 that was given to... Um, rec department to do research on youth program is that fund going back back would the would the fund go to dei department so i have no um that funds, i don't I, that I don't know yeah i don't know um the answer to that i wasn't aware that there had been a transfer of funds to the rec department i think this must have been prior to my arrival so i'm i'm not sure this the the position that Earl and I are going to share, um, I thought would help to begin to fill the need that was identified because in theory, we can hire someone who can start to do, to really develop time and energy into this area and to develop programming that we would be able to offer um, even though there's no structure in place, right? Because the programming could be offered in theory at Jones Library or in the high school or in the middle school or, you know, we can we can provide the, provide the programming without a building in place. But I, I'm not sure about what happened prior to to my arrival as far as the funding that was concerned. The only funds. And I'm not even sure about this. I thought that there had been funds set aside for a study. Um, but, That's what I meant. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant, uh, yeah. through the upper funds. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your efforts. You know, I will keep quiet, but there is a lot of emotions that, you know, that is triggering me. Um, because is you know, BIPOC youth are going to benefit from this program. All of a sudden, the town doesn't have space for, for, our, for our youth or youth in general. 
and you know getting a part time staff to help to help out you know to do research on that all those things are irritated me uh, but we have money to support Jones Library because it was pushed by status quo powerful land owners in this town and we don't have risk money really to locate a space for our youth CSWG was very clear any programming without a dedicated building let me say it again. There has to be a building space for our youth in this town. Mm -hmm. Doing it at Jones Library to the school is triggering for some youth. Some people go to school because they had to. To make kids to get youth programming in the school, if they don't have to attend classes, I don't think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So may I may I ask? I mean, I mentioned those locations as just top of mind. Is there a you know? I'm I'm thinking that there that there should be some opportunity to have programming start before a building is built or dedicated because that will take will take years. So you're would you, you're shaking your head. Does that mean that you would be in favor of no programming until the building is Built? I mean, in favor of getting building ASAP. The town can rent commercial building. If they look very hard, they will find. If this is something that, you know, status quo, wealthy, large white people are looking for, I bet you the town council, they will find, they will find space. If we look very well, we'll find space for you. It's not going to work because we we interviewed seven gen are here. I don't want to speak for seven gen. Uh, Dr. D that did a very beautiful research for CSWG. The youth from their mouth, they want a place where they can hang out. It cannot be Jones Library. It cannot be school system. Okay, they want their own dedicated building. So do not just hanging out with mentorship, academic support, anything that doesn't have to do with white space, excuse me, I don't know how many times I'll say this. This is not what CSWG recommended. And we have money to support John Slide Rally, $16 million. And we can't come out with you know, two or $3 million to, you know, to do youth and bipolar cultural center. I'm getting very irritated, I'm sorry. But it's not, it, it's not towards you, Ms. Ms. Pamela. I know you're trying your best, but this is just checking the box by the people in power, you know, CSWG requested this, we've, we've, we've checked the box, we're, we're working on the youth programming, let's move on. That's, that's how I'm, I'm feeling, I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. Uh, I'm sorry you mentioned this, but is there an, a time, like a hours per week that the volunteer would be working? So the volunteer would um, work week would be Monday through Thursday from eight until five. So it's um you know a pretty much a full time position. On Fridays, uh, uh, pursuant to the Amer AmeriCorps contract, uh, the individual has program with their has programming that they have to do with the uh, AmeriCorps. I just I wonder too if there's any way since we know that the bid got like $300,000 in ARPA funds from the Drake, if we can go back to the bid and say, hey, you got all this money and you're making all this profit off of your performing arts space, like why don't you set up an internship program for youth where you're paying stipends to, you know, to subsidize the employment that you're going into in the community. So say, you know, I come in, I'm 15, I got a job at Hazel's and why can't the bid be contributing to youth development in that sense um, so that they're giving that money back into the community and youth are working, businesses are getting a little bit of a reprieve. Like, wouldn't that be a great partnership on all ends? Um, just something I've been thinking about. And I know Boston had a model um, through their community development corporation where they, they would kind of subsidize youth employment for the summer. Um, 
and it had, I mean, it had positive effects all around, you know, the businesses have employees, the youth have something to do and they're, and then they're making money so they can contribute back into the local economy. And, you know, it's a great community partnership. So that's just something I've been thinking about. And, you know, I, I echo Miss Pat's concerns. I mean, I think that it's super important that the youth have something to do, and but there needs to be somewhere for them, them to go um, to do the things. And I mean, I remember when I was a youth in this town, we like hung out in front of the Bang Center because that was the only space that was kind of available to us. Because if we walked in the Bang Center, we got dirty looks from you know the seniors that were using the senior center part of that space. Um, and I was a person who was involved in school. I had extracurricular activities, but they didn't take up all my time. Um, so I, I do think that without a space that feels welcoming, that the you know the activities can't happen. Um, but I do. I really am glad that you're putting the effort towards getting programming for the youth. I think right now our town is showing that. The youth aren't their priority, not just by not funding mm -hmm. this, but by what's happening with the school system and cutting 30 positions across the schools. It's really concerning. Um, so thank you. I know it's it's a battle <laughs> we're all fighting. And I think there's, you know, I wish that there was a prioritization of funding for what you're trying to do. D. Yes, um, agreed. It's it's a battle. The um, the AmeriCorps uh, in a organ previous organization I was involved with, Youth Action Coalition. We used um, AmeriCorps uh, students, and um, I mean, they're college graduates, usually undergrad or near to finishing um, their their undergraduate degree very intelligent, smart young people. Um, so, you know, they'll be guided by you and Jen. It would be great to have them meet with area youth. So as Ms. Pat, you know, references um, Seven Jen, we got, you know, the, the words uh, and the voices from the, the young people that participated with us, the, the BIPOC youth, that they wanted their own space. And wanting your own space um, suggest empowerment, that they wanted to feel, you know, like they belong because they felt marginalized. And you know, these are real issues when we talk about, well, what leads young people to just hang out? And some BIPOC youth are more targeted than others when they're hanging out. We've seen the evidence of that. And so if our town really wants to um, have ways to, to, to mitigate, to intervene, so those things don't happen perhaps, you know, as July 5th, kids need to have their, their own space, you know, with, within reason at, okay, 11, 12 midnight. Yeah. It's time. Everybody needs to go home. This is the curfew, but having um, their, their own space in which to uh, create their own activities, um, you know, create their own uh, sense of belonging is really important. And um, I know that there's lots of buildings in the town that they have yet to figure out what to do with these properties. So it would be great for the intern to maybe creatively not only meet with uh, young people, BIPOC youth in particular, to figure out what their wants and needs are, um, you know, do some type of sessions with them, some focus groups, um, but also, you know, begin to talk to um, people in the town, particularly the folks um, who uh, manage these buildings that are vacant, Hitchcock. you know, so for instance, the Hitchcock Center, um, the old Hitchcock Center. 
you know, that property is just languishing. It's, of course, it's gotten even worse since it was vacated. But um, when it was initially vacated, it was not in such bad shape. Now it is just languishing and it's getting worse and worse, the old Hitchcock property. Um, and, and that's just one, one example, okay? Lastly, I wanted to revisit and, and just if you could get back to us about this in terms of language services, I recall that Mindy Dom had allotted some funds last year for language services. Um, has all that money been utilized? So I um, don't have any knowledge of uh, set aside funds for language services. Um, from okay, Jennifer was aware of it because Jennifer had come mm -hmm. back to us um, about those funds. And I know she did say, well, some of the, um, the flyers had been translated, that type of thing. But flyer translation you know, you can do that online now and then maybe get a, a, a speaker to then go through it and make sure this is translated properly. Don't rely on Google Translate. But, um, you know, just to see if any of those funds are still available within the town that Mindy Dom uh, had uh, put together. So th those are my comments there. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, you know, AmeriCorps, that, that's great, put some resources for it but um, there's still much to be done to have an actual youth empowerment center. Thank you. Question. Um, will, will this person be able, how is transportation going to be managed? How are kids going to be involved in activities in, in terms of arranging for transportation because CSWG recommended for DEI to have its own vehicle, at mm -hmm. least for the um, youth center. So, you know, how is this going to work out for kids who might need transportation to whatever activities that is planned or, mm -hmm. or driving them home, for example, because this is what we talked about at CSWG. Yeah. So I, I do not have uh, all of the details um, um, about how transportation would be organized. Um, Jennifer and I had a preliminary conversation about uh, use of um, a school bus and hiring a school bus and driver to provide transportation. But, um, you know, not all of those, those uh, questions have been answered yet. And um, there is obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious to everyone, but certainly part of the of the position description includes outreach to students um, because um, you know the you can't have youth empowerment unless you're having conversations with students about what they want to do. So uh, that is included in in the description of the position that. Uh, this individual would be responsible for uh, engaging in that type of outreach and having conversations and uh, working with uh, students to develop the type of programming that they're, you know, that they're interested in. But so, so um, there has been some thought given to transportation, but I, you know, we have not figured all of those pieces out yet. Last question, I promise. Very last question. Any um, update about bicultural, no, BIPOC center at all? Is there no. any conversation, any discussion? Um, because we don't have our, we don't have any safe space in Amherst. Yeah. Even yeah. the Black Business Association. You know, it would be nice to, to go to a bigger space if we have to do an event, for example, or the, you know, Asian group or whatever, but there is no safe space for us to do anything. It seems like we're not a uh, town council priority or the town government priority. So we're not powerful enough to be considered, but we have money, tax dollars to pay extensive Jones Library. Okay. So I, I don't know what CS, 
as JC, what we're doing. Like we're supposed to be recommending, making recommendations to move our town forward, to promote social justice, equity, inclusion, all that stuff. And it's like town council, they're ignoring us, the town manager ignoring us. And you know, what is the point? It's like human uh, uh, HRC, they have talented people who can make some changes in this town, but they're not given the power to do that. Only happens to town committees that we have more of BIPOC members. Anyways, I'm getting frustrated about our role with this group. I am. So we can't continue like this. They cannot continue to ignore us like this. Um, it's not helpful to anyone. Agreed. And um, I would like for us to, you know, I, I hear Earl saying, you know, the July session for them and they, they could certainly do that. But I think we need our own uh, listening session along with DEI um, as we hit this, you know, year mark mm -hmm. and, um, you know, advertise that, get people to come out and, you know, we may get some uh, feedback that people don't appreciate whatever we're doing. And I, you know, I'm sure that we'll also get feedback that people uh, appreciate what we're doing and probably want um, more in terms of equity work within this community. So I think we need to, once we get past March 25th, we need to begin planning planning our own uh, listening session, um, and uh, you know include about the budget, um, include um, you know about ARPA funds, all the things we've been working on, and maybe write up our own presentation and report. These are the different things that we've worked on this year, um, and you know, what we've been able to do. Um, I mean, I think the resolutions that have come out of the town council um, certainly were part of some progressive counselors, but also with um, what we, in conjunction with what we were trying to do within CSSJC. So I think we'll, we'll need to put that together ourselves and, and do our own type of presentation and, and report. Okay, um, why don't we, is, are there any other questions or comments? Like, were you back? Are there any other questions or comments about um, for DEI? Not from me. Okay. What should we, cause it's getting late. Um, what should we look at on this agenda and, and put as a priority? I just real quick, the item uh, E, Long Metal Anti-Racism Racism Task Force. I wanted to share that with you all. I came across it while uh, working on some stuff in, in Long Meadow recently. Um, there are some interesting pieces. Of course, they have a select board model still of uh, government, but they have this task force that uh, came about in 2021 um, that had some, uh, I think, some relevant areas that, you know, as we were talking about um, an audit, a town audit, how that might work, how that may, might function in terms of, um, uh, you know, responsibility within the town to, to equity and their commitment to equity. Um, how they go about their hiring and promotions um, and the other thing. Yeah, those, those, were, the, those were the main things that they have a, a toolkit that they use when they do hire and for the departments about an anti-racist toolkit. I think what Pamela was um, talking about in terms of the workshops and the GARE, 
could be akin to that, but I'm not sure, you know, I'd like to see actually what, um, what is given to department heads, let's say, because this, this report, they're actually talking about this is given to departments um, in order to make sure that um, they are looking through that uh, anti-racist lens for, for hiring, for retention, et cetera. And so that would be another conversation but um, anyway, I just bring it to everyone's attention because there are other towns that um, after uh, the murder of George Floyd uh, kicked into gear and tried to, you know, create these task force and what some of them are doing. A place as uh, still highly segregated like um, uh, Longmeadow, it's, it's an interesting step. So that's all for, for that part. Thank you, Dee. Um, and that is in the packet there, like report. Um, we've already done D. There is no post update. Um, I think. What about, so what about so ARPA funds? Okay, so the budget, um, okay. even though we didn't have like formal budget budget, uh, but we had raised something up. I'm just wondering, did that go out to the town council yet? So where we listed, yeah. We had talked about it. We started to look at it. Then we decided we were gonna write a list of things that we wanted to prioritize that were policy recommendations. And then I don't think that we were able to get to that. So I think, I mean, I think time's a ticking if we want to send a letter related to the budget. I think we should do it now or just, not. I would like to suggest that whatever, uh, uh, if it's okay for everybody for the time, for the sake of time, that Aliga and I put together for us to just forward it to, to the DAC Council. Is that okay with everyone? It was in the last packet. Uh, it, yeah, in uh, February, to have Aliga send it out to the town Council. Agreed. And the, the urgency on that is that Lynn Greismer got back to us when I had um, asked for a meeting, <laughs> a meeting. And mm -hmm. basically she said that, well, um, we're all going to meet on this for April 6th. So the April 6th meeting pertaining to the budget. But you should. Um, is it the third? Oh, I'm sorry. April 3rd. Thank you so much, Allegra. April 3rd. And um, so they should get something, you know, uh, whatever you all are going to send, I agree, should mm -hmm. go out before then, because what she's saying here in preparation for the meeting on Monday, April 3rd, the following must take place. This is in an email to me. By March 20th, the town manager working with the staff must prepare and make available a written report on actions to be taken and or progress in addressing um, the above, which includes the CSSJC, um, Human Rights Commission, um, you know, a whole litany of stuff. Um, while that report will be public, it will be specifically sent to the town council, council, the CSSJC and the HRC. So the things that we talked about in November, basically, um, they're going to have a response to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then by March 29th, the CSSJC and the HRC will have to meet and discuss in public to provide written advice to the town council. So I don't know if everyone got the email that I sent out for re-agenda scheduling, but I think that Human Rights Commission already has their meeting scheduled for next Wednesday. And so we were just going to hop on as a joint meeting for a little while. I mean, it doesn't give us very much time to review the document, but it allows us to do it in a public manner. Um, so that is the plan there. Um, so then the but whatever we're so, going to send to the town council, then should that go out before? I I mean, I think so, because I think that what what they are also talking about might incorporate some of the policy recommendations that we had been talking about yeah. at the last meeting that um hopefully because that's one of the things they said they were going to do is look at policy um so i think i think if the budget if we i can send out the budget letter tonight 
I mean, yeah, please, yeah, um, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. So, so um, still on budget. Um, somebody made it aware to me that apparently the police department has in their budget, you know, a surveillance camera. So why are we adding more money to the police department when other, other you know, priorities are being ignored? And I would like to set policy if the town decides to purchase surveillance camera, you know, how it's going to be used, who will be collecting, you know, more details and not just getting, you know, body cams for, for the police. Will it be to protect the resident that is involved with the police or will it be to protect the police? Because the camera is not supposed to protect the police. If they're using it to protect themselves, then they're doing something wrong. But if it's being used to protect resident when they encounter police, then that's a different story. So it would be good for the police chief to do some, you know, to inform the public the policy, how they plan to use this. Apparently, it's, it's nicknamed into the budget, and I didn't even know about it. And somebody, you know, called my attention to it. Thank you. And then I attended, you know, this is not budget, but just a different quick issue, solar, pro, uh, solar program in Amherst. I attended apparently like six people were in the audience and I didn't hear what I wanted to hear. In this town, I've noticed that when the town wants to spend money, then they do big campaign, big, do big outreach. They want to reach everybody. We have it in the school, building project in the Jones Library. We're having that in solar program. However, however, when it comes to spending money, tax dollars money, okay? They don't take the time, the town council, the town government, do not take the time to do similar outreach. Only a handful of people make financial decisions for us in this town. Upper Fund is, for example, because I looked at some big cities and smaller communities. I looked at Houston, I looked at uh, Northampton, and a few other places. They actually did community engagement. How would you like upper fund spent? And it went to broad range of groups. But that's not what happened in our town. Many people did not even know about upper funds. Black business owners, we did not get dime for the existing businesses based on the town records. Black owned businesses did not receive upper funds. There was no outreach done to any group. Only a handful of white decision makers, including BID, decided how to distribute your tax dollars. So this is an equity issue and nobody seems to be concerned. The town council president has not made it a priority agenda to be discussed at town council. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I, I actually, the question for, for Ms. Young. Um, so ARPA funds, um, as Ms. Pat uh, uh, described, in other towns and communities were distributed and were, were first, you know, talked about and then uh, distributed through entities within the town, the municipalities themselves. Um, and of course, that doesn't guarantee things are, are you know, equitable or whatever. But now that you've probably heard about what has gone on through the chamber and the bid, what what's the DEI's uh, 
assessment or view about the inequitable uh, distribution of the ARPA funds. Isn't this something that DEI would be a part of normally? So I think uh, had the, well, I guess um, you might make the argument that the office was, um, or that Jennifer had some capacity uh, to work on DEI uh, issues uh, prior to the official start of the office, because she did do some of that work um, in her prior capacity. But since I have been in this role the last seven months, uh, I think the bulk of those decisions came prior to my uh, arrival in town and did not have an opportunity to participate um, in those decision decision making. Um, I, I think as Ms. Anabaku has pointed out, you know, some towns did engage in community engagement. What Amherst did or why they did what they did prior to my arrival, I just, you know, I don't have the ability to really speak on that because I wasn't here. Um, okay, that's that's understandable, but there's still funds. Um, that are out yeah. there outstanding. And yeah. so, yeah. right. So I'm, you know, in, in my uh, opinion, this would be something because these aren't private funds. These are, you know, um, uh, federal funds, state and federal funds that um, there would be a role for DEI in terms of how do we now equitably distribute the last two million that is you know coming into this this town and so you know i i think that that's um an important area when we talk about equity economic equity um for the the dei to be a part of and to weigh in on this conversation or to talk about, you know, we, we have the, the uh, Amherst uh, uh, Area Black Business Association um, that is trying to uh, get some of those funds to help the Black businesses, you know? So, I mean, that's just an example of one way to, to be more equitable, but Again, where where is DEI in on this in the last two million? So I have not been uh, privy to any conversations about how the last two million has been. I, I don't know what the plan is for the distribution of the last the last two million dollars. So. Okay, is there a way for you to look into that, please? Sure, I can have a conversation with the finance director. Um, Thank you, and the town manager mm -hmm. about that because it is it is an equity issue. It's not, you know, just willy nilly. This is an equity issue of two million dollars. Okay, thank you. I will check back with you about that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Freke. Um, I wasn't sure, did we blend together the discussion of APA funds with um, the budgets? Because I think we were discussing at some point um, priorities and how that was going to be written up and whether that would be sent directly or whether there would be a way that would be sent to the group. So I wanted to know or get some clarification on that. Can you ask your question again? where the funds will be distributed? No, 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 I, oh. um, No, we did. And I'm gonna take onus for that because we went from budget and then um, I brought up ARPA, I guess I was trying to bring us <laughs> to oh, okay. the So they did end up blending. They are two separate things though. Yeah, uh, it yeah. sounds like I, we did yeah. conclude with Allegra is going to send um, the, the, the budget letter that was included yeah. in the last meeting yeah. um, to uh, the town council. So that was that part. And then ARPA funds was on our agenda. 
Yeah, and I brought it up because they're kind of related because I'm hearing some town councillors asking, you know, for some of the, you know, upper funds for other projects, you know, if they, you know, to fill, you know, budget gap, which I'm not against, but I hope people will also remember that black owned businesses did not get a dime for all existing businesses. No black person got upper funds for existing businesses. So they're kind of related, sort of budget and upper, but thank you for raising the question. So I would like to see some movement. I would like to see, you know, outcry from the community. I want our allies to support. If you really want to have diversity of businesses, I will, you know, I appreciate people who have been like thanking us behind the scene and privately. If you all really want to show support, write letter to the editor, you know, go to town council meeting, you know, speak up, support black owned businesses, back BIPOC owned businesses. Uh, write, write, you know, emails, complaints, whatever, to the town manager, to, you know, to the town council. That way we know that you, you truly, truly support, you know, Black-owned businesses, BIPOC. And it's not just only Black people. Uh, there are other ethnic groups that didn't get as much as white-owned businesses. And I'm not against, you know, the smaller white businesses that got upper fund. It's not the issue is the $300 that was given to Drake is, is driving me crazy. It's not fair. 300,000. There's no equity. 300,000. Three, $300,000 and we have, and it's just a nightclub. And we have another nightclub that is owned by black people that have put in very significant amount of money to have, the nightclub running, and they did not get it, get any dime. How is that fair? The rich, you know, keep getting richer. I will keep raising my voice until justice is done with tax dollars. The Hispanic groups, the Asian, Native American groups, all the ethnic groups were really left out with this upper fund. The two million should be devoted to youth programming, macro center, businesses that is owned by BIPOC people. That's where I would like to see the entire $2 million go. Thanks, Frankie. Uh, thank you. I'd still like to return to um, the letter that was supposed to be sent, if it's a point of clarification, if I'm getting this right, um, the letter was already available from February? Yes, yes from last meeting. Okay. Um, um, is there any reason why it wasn't sent earlier? Were the things that were added in or um, what? We actually, we actually um, approved it, the last me meeting. We, okay. You know, um, Allegra, if you want, you can resend it to everybody tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I so my recollection was that we had approved it and then from some of the feedback that the community had said during the conversation we were having about policing, I think it was Mr. Rhodes who said it would be helpful to just whittle down to one or two priorities. Yeah. Um which the letter did not do. I mean, it was just basically like, please increase the funding for the two program, the two de new departments of so Cress and DEI, and then please allocate more funding to creating the Youth Empowerment Center and the BIPOC Multicultural Center. So it and was child care, child care. Sorry, family care. Yeah. Yes. Adult care. Yeah. Yes. Um. So it, it was basically just in support of all the CSWG recommendations, plus some of the recommendations that have come out of this committee so far. Um, and then we pivoted to the idea of perhaps specifying some priorities to focus on policy-wise. Um, and I think that discussion will come 
next week with HRC instead. So I'm just wondering, I mean, I, I think that it would be important to send a letter about the budget, but if people are feeling like they don't want to, then. May I suggest that you send it out? Let me, I'll send it out tomorrow. Okay. And then before, you know, I can even, I look like you can do that too, if you want. Do you want a refresher, um, Dr. Frecky? Yes, please, a refresher is always okay. good. Um, okay. Now that that okay. is out of the way, um, could I return to um, Ms. Pat, some of the yeah. things that you've mentioned? Um, I would be interested, I, I, I believe this is the forum for such, I'd be interested in if we um, see some discrepancies in the way that businesses um, are treated in um, the town, it would be good to um, have a discussion on that for ways forward. Um, and um, I, I, I understand from what you said that um, there is some section of some fund still remaining, um, but what I would be looking for is how do we make sure that going forward, the town um, gets to be more equitable in the treatment? And so it's um, not so much a response to things that have been done, but um, being proactive before something else um, occurs. Thank you. I think I'd like to second that, Frank. Thank you so much for bringing that up because I think that in all this, definitely, in my opinion, there's for sure an equity happening in the distribution of ARPA funds. And the conversation about bringing the DEI department in and having them look at it is definitely needed. And I totally agree. And so if we're talking about budget season and how next year's ARPA funds are for sure going to be distributed. I think that these conversations are relevant into that equity piece for further advancement while still acknowledging that what is currently happening is subpar to what should be happening. Sounds good. Okay, where are we on the agenda? Uh, We're done. I think the one, the one thing that I think is really important. Public uh, comment. Well, police that chief. also, but the police chief. Police chief. Oh! I mean, I think that we should, this should be an area where we influence, right? Based on what CSWG had foreseen and wanting DEI involved in things like the police contract negotiating, don't we wanna be involved in the police chief hiring? I mean, I think we should be, <laughs> um, but I, I mean, don't know I, what other yeah. people are feeling about that. Um, so I, I, I can go first. Um, Change, you know, sometimes can be difficult. Some people don't like change or transition, but I think, you know, the community should have open mind. I think my expectation, I hope that it will be a robust outreach to especially community, communities negatively impacted by policing in our town. For our constituents have significant representation in the next uh, police chief. Not in, in anything less than that, you know, it's, it's mediocre, period. So um, we should not be thinking about promoting from inside, we need outside. 
And I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, that person is going to be perfect, but let's have a lot of input for, for, for people who have been, you know, hurt most by the police, including people with behavioral disabilities and, you know, other situations, basically. So um, I'm actually excited for the change. That's all I can say. It's an exciting time. So Pam, you may not know the answer to this, but what's the, um, the interviewing process going to be like or what's anticipated uh, for the police chief? And, and will there be uh, a role for the community to weigh in? Um, or will this all just be internal? Like uh, Earl, I, I don't know all of the um, decisions that have taken place about what the search process is going to be like. So I, I don't really know at this point. Okay, and so you haven't been asked to uh, eventually be on the committee or anything like that or? So I, um, I was notified by the, the town manager, obviously, that the chief was gonna be uh, leaving. In the past, he has included me in the search process for the higher level position. So that's sort of my expectations, but um, I don't think that the full realization of what that process has been lo will look like has been determined yet. Thank you. Please let us know whenever <laughs> that happens. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's only appropriate, given that we're speaking about the um, the police chief's retirement, to um, thank him for his service. Um, given the length of time that he spends, that is the length of time in the public space um, that should be appreciated, regardless of what our feelings um, may be. I think part of the reason that is necessary is we can now have an opportunity to extend our hand to um, whoever else is going to be in that position and um, let them know that we expect to work with them and look forward to having a good relationship um, with them as well. Um, and also that uh, this being a public forum, it might be appropriate to again, speak about the fact that it would be helpful if we are, if not integrated, at least made aware or apprised of um, what the process is for um, the new person who takes over. Thank you. So is that a, a, a memo or an email you want to go ahead and draft? Freke? So um, we can I think I'm pretty um, lo-fi in this situation, this is a public forum, so um, there isn't any need to draft. Um, oh, email. okay. Everything so is already on the record. Oh, okay. Is, All um, right. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if that was something you wanted to send officially. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want to say something or? Um, nope. That, that was it for that. Philip, do you have anything you would want to add? Uh, I would just like to echo that. I think that it is a great opportunity and time for this town to, I think, <clears throat> give some power and some emphasis on what is promoted for town values on anti-racism to look at candidates that promote those types of things. And if it is a candidate within our police department or if it is a candidate outside of our police department, I think that that should definitely be heavily weighed on as well as giving community input because at the end of the day, we all are residents. And I think that residents have the opportunity to kind of say who they would like to be running the program 
or the department that upholds laws that, uh, that can restrict minoritized groups. So I really think that we should listen to our residents as much as possible in this instance. So do we think putting a memo together to Mr. Bockelman about our hopes and aspirations for the search process and being included and including residents and including DEI and including crests or or at least at the very least having a very serious conversation with candidates about how they intend to work with crests is that a memo we think we should put together i wouldn't be opposed to it others i think that, that would be good miss pat was that a yes or a no i was, I was going to say that we we're already doing a lot. I mean, unless if you're thinking of drafting something, um, the stuff that we tend to thank council in the past, they haven't worked on it. I'm not against it, but if somebody wants to volunteer to draft it, um, I just feel that each of us are all overextended, but I think we will have opportunities in, for, in a public forum to speak our mind, you know, the next leadership that we need. Um, at the police department, it should be clear. So, I mean, I don't mind drafting something. I okay. I hear the concern and see the concern that sometimes the things that we say might not penetrate the people in power. But um, okay, if you're if you're volunteering to do that, that's fine. <laughs> Thank and I you. Can do the same thing. Send it to um Jen to have it sent out to the group and wait for feedback yeah. and I believe that the last day for Chief Livingstone is the end of May is that correct yeah. so likely there will be some sort of interim leadership I would imagine unless they are moving quickly and already in the hiring process um so I could support you Allegra yeah okay all right, so. Uh, oh boy, it's nine o'clock. It's getting it's too late. Yeah. Um, so public comment? No or? Public comment, unless anybody has any other comments for us. Um, okay, public comment. Does anybody want to say, oh, there's a hand. I see it. Oh, I'm, uh, there she comes. Um, hi, this is Vera Cage. Can you, everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I just want to quickly say thank you for your time. Um, this evening, I, I listened to the, to the meeting. Um, very impressed by all of your heart, your dedication um, to do this work. I know it's not easy. Um, taking the time from your families um, to be together this evening and to to serve, you know, the public. Um, I want to just touch upon what um, um, Pamela Young has stated with regards to um, how quickly or not things happen in this community. Um, I think the Drake is a is a great example of when resources and attention are driven to, you know, people and a cause that is about um, being successful, um, setting up for success. Um, it, it practically the Drake was was created overnight, right? Um, and that has a lot to do with an infusion of, of capital. So $300,000 um, to, to, to be in, you know, and, and then that's in addition to state funding um, of about $160,000. So that paid for rent upfront three years. 
that paid for a build out that paid for that's paying for for programming um so this town has examples of um things that can happen overnight you know we're able to 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 do renovations to a parking lot in front of town hall and dedicate a million dollars of community preservation act money towards that to, to just overhaul the parking to create green space right because some people said that they value that and they pushed for that and they lobbied for it and they got it they got the town manager to support it they got the town council to support it they got the community preservation act committee to support it um so i just want us to be mindful of that when we talk about things for our bipoc community um for our teams um for people who feel that they don't have a voice and rightly so. So that's all I have to say this evening. Um, I think it's it's hopeful and it is optimistic um, because I think we have to 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 expect more for our people, for our our communities, um, and, and 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 raise our level of expectation of what we deserve for ourselves. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Let's say so we are having a joint meeting next Wednesday with Human Rights Commission. What time is that? Is that meeting at six, Pamela? Yeah, six, but I would say relevance for CSSJC probably more towards like 637 because we'll do a little bit of our agenda first, but the bulk of that meeting is for the town manager's report, but we just have a few things to take care of on the HRC, so. Uh, so do you want us to join you guys at seven or 6.45? I'm hesitant to give a time because I don't know how long things will take us, but if you are available from 6.45 to seven, I think in between that time frame will probably be it. Okay, so we'll just wait in the audience and then you bring us in. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then oh, Pamela has oh, her hand. Oh, yeah. Pamela, yes. So I um I think that you will all be brought in as a panelist because uh uh if you're over a quorum. So um it the I think it's um the intention to have both meetings. Uh, uh, be notified um, as a joint meeting. So, I mean, you're welcome not, you know, to hang out, but I, uh, I think you'll be coming in as, as a, when you come in, I think you'll be coming in as a panelist, not an attendee. And then, so, so next week will be heavy because then we'll have the listening session the 25th. Um, and then are we thinking, oh, and then April 3rd. <laughs> so we, we're going to be spending a lot of time with each other over the next couple of weeks. Um, Can I make a suggestion that yeah. because we're having that joint meeting on April 3rd, do we still need to meet that month? Because I'm I'm concerned about people burning out. Yeah. That's a lot of activities. Next week we're having the joint with HRC. On Saturday we're doing listening session, and a few more days we're doing April third joint meeting. So, is it realistic to have regular CSSJC meeting in April? Especially when everything that we've been pushing for, we have not seen any you know, had been not like, yeah. So it's like, yeah. I think we should take a break after April 3rd and then meet in May or something. I I believe so too, because by yeah. that time, um, the budget letter would have gone through yeah. and they uh, theoretically, that April 3rd meeting with the town council, they would discuss that with us that would be part of the discussion i'd imagine 
I mean, we could say we want it as part of our discussion that that meeting for April 3rd. I don't know if we have to let them know, but. Because I'm feeling like we're spinning the wheel, like we're discussing, you know, same theme every time we meet and it's just not moving. July 5th has not been resolved. We don't know what the town is going to do with the upper funds. Uh, we don't know, you know, the budget, how, you know, from equity lens, if it's fair. It's like a handful of people are making all the, you know, budget decision and we're meeting every month. And social justice, yeah, this group supposed to be providing recommendation to the entire town department and to town council. And it seems like they're taking us for granted, you know, that we exist. You know, I don't want to be a part of check off the box. Mm -hmm. If, it, if, you know, if the town wants status quo members to join the, the group, that's fine. But if we truly are serious about making changes, then listen to our recommendation, including, you know, recommendation made by CSWG. It's taking too long. Like, you know, Vera rightly stated, when it's top priority for them, it will happen overnight. So I don't want to hear excuses that we don't have resources. Yes, we do. We have you know, cash reserve. We still have some upper funds. It's like, where are we placing our priority? You know, We need to follow the money. I don't want to come to meetings and all we do is like talk, 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 and we're not seeing any action for things we've recommended to, to the town. We shouldn't play that because that's, that's called you know, being marginalized. Let them talk. We're not going to take action because we have the, uh, you know, they have the power. You know, you guys can meet. You, you want CSS, JC, we've given it to you. We're giving you the committee. Check off the box. MS is a progressive town. Clap, clap, clap. Right? We need to take April off after April 3rd and, and reconvene on in, in May. They're taking us for granted. D. So I'm going to agree that, you know, just because there's so many meetings that, yeah, after April 3rd, we don't have an April meeting, we wait till May. But I do, I think we need to, um, within whatever next document goes to the town council, we need to state that. Miss Pat, you know, our um, our recommendations, this is part of our recommendation. The budget is part of our recommendation. Budgets are, as, as most activists will tell you, they are moral documents, meaning the, the you know, you, you supposedly vote your values. <laughs> Some people uh, still tend to vote their values and that could be economic. You, um, you budget your values. And so we are making recommendations of certain budget priorities based on our committee. And then when those things are not being uh, listened to or moved on, as you say, it's problematic because what the hell are we doing? Exactly. Yeah. You know, the example of Longmeadow, the other reason why I give it is that they have this, it's a task force, which means it was probably a temporary task force to make those recommendations. Amherst does not have within their town government a residential group besides us that is set up as a kind of anti racist um diversity and inclusion task force again this is stuff that they voted on almost two years ago to say this is what we are committed to well you need some type of mechanism some type of organization to make sure that you are moving those things along it is not part of the charter for the town council as much as we would you know, in our best of worlds would like for something like that to be, but that's not part of their responsibility and they will tell you that. So then whose responsibility is it? So here we are as the CSSJC, the appointed committee and 
Part of our role is to make the recommendations, yet they have not been moved on. So I, I think that needs to be part somehow of the statement that here we're, we're hitting this mark and um, you know we would like to see some actual progress. I agree. Um, it's like, and, no, it's like then, planning department. It's like planning department. They make their decision. I listen to their meetings sometimes. So many other town committees make decision, implement it, see action. But for us, we are at the mercy of town council to approve anything. And that is irritating me. Sorry. So I agree. Um, I think that the best use of our time would be to meet either May 3rd or May 10th. That will be after the budget comes out. So maybe May 10th, because usually then they'll do a public forum like two weeks after. Mm -hmm. So if we meet in between when the budget is released and the public forum, then we will have time to have gone over the budget to see where they have included or not included mm -hmm. DEI, CRAS, and other um, equity issues. And um, maybe we'll all have a little bit more energy to come back to the table with them. Um, but I think that's that's what it is. I mean, we, uh, you know, some of us saw this uh, last year in terms of the budget process and got very involved. So having that that budget uh, priorities document coming from CSSJC early on, okay, it's sent you know what our uh, uh, recommendations are, and then we'll see, are they gonna be included in May? Um, if they're not, then it's to, again, uh, write a letter, get people involved within the community, uh, making sure they understand this document that the town council is submitting for, for the budget for May, that's gonna be it. So um, this is a time for your voice to be heard. We've made our voices heard, you know, uh, as the CSSJC, we may even want to publish it, you know, to the, the different, um, uh, the Indy or, or the Gazette. This is our budget priorities, recommendations that we are making as a CSSJC. We, we hope the town council uh, listens to our recommendations uh and includes them in this next uh budgeting round you know very good point you know i think for me the whole process the whole budget process is irritating me because my expectation with cssjc is actually i had hoped that the uh finance director and the town manager will actually come to us or the finance committee reach out to us because what we stand for is to remind the finance committee, the town council, the town manager from equity lens. This is what marginalized group in community, this is what we're hearing. This is what we would like some of our budget funding go. But there is, who, what other town committee do we have that will, look out for the interest of marginalized people in this town, none. So I don't know what else that we need to do. I've tried to invite the uh, finance director for upper funds. he never have time, but we'll have time to go to other committee meetings. Because why? We're majority by folks. We're being marginalized. Let's name it. Let's name what it is and not just get around there. So I don't know what the purpose of this committee is. If the town is deliberately ignoring our input. And I'll keep repeating myself, July 5th, APA funds, the budget process, the budget. What are we here for? It's something that each of us need to really think very hard. If you want to be part of the status quo, then let's not raise any hell that people know that pat on the back is not part of. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play status quo. I don't, I'm not in any group that plays status quo. I don't do that. I'm not here to please anybody. I'm here 
to make effective change. And so the town really needs to decide, do we really want the change or just performance? You know, checking the box, is that what we want? If that's what we want, then make it clear. Recruit people who once check the, the box and continue to perform our town. But, but history will judge each and every one of us. So, you know, I think that having the April meeting with town council will give us another temperature test. I mean, we'll see how that goes. And I think that this conversation is important and I think it should be continued at our next meeting. Um, I'm just wondering for the sake of time, does can we figure out if May 3rd or May 10th would work better? Um, I, May 10th might give people a little bit of extra time to look over the budget. When is UMass mm -hmm. graduation? When's UMass? Uh, 29th. Oh, so they have time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 10th will work for me. The 10th? The 10th works better for me. Okay. What about you? Yes. Oh, I, I, okay. Wonderful. Okay. And Freke, you're good That's with well. the 10th? Okay. All right. Um, so I will, and I will um, email Deb and let her know because I know she had asked me to keep her in the loop about the next date and whatnot. Um, well, thank you everyone for continuing to show up. I know it's not easy and it's tiring <laughs> and frustrating. And I think, you know, I, I can feel that as well, um, but I'm glad that we're all here and there's a lot of work to do and I hope that we can continue to do it. I really appreciate each and every one of you and you too, Ms. Young. I know coming mm -hmm. into this in the last seven months and just being dropped in and trying to catch up, it's been a lot, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I agree with what you just said and Allegra, thank you. For your patience, your patience is incredible. <laughs> come, <in. laughs> let it come. Yeah, thank you. All everybody. right. So, should we move to adjourn? Yes, please. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn. CSS. I second. All right. Thank you all. Thank See you. See you next everybody. week, Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> Good night. All right. Good night.